How you folks back in the Boss Man Show? Time for JC Ball segment, bruh. The playoffs started, man. How you doing over there in Memphis, man? Man, we good, man. Uh, just chilling up here. You know, my Grizz got knocked out in the playoff game, man. So uh, no playoffs for us this year, man. But you know, sitting back watching these uh these games, man. Man, no doubt. Now. We'll talk about his, his, his topic first right here. Adam Silver wants to do his play-in game again. Um, how'd you like the play-in game? Uh, the pressure of the game? I, you know, you got to win two for your nine seed, win one for your eighth seed. I think it was a cool concept, but, you know, I'm a traditionalist. Um, a, a two games to me enough to determine whether you to be the eighth seed or not. Not need a play-in game. But it was exciting. But Adam Silver wants to go with, go with down the road. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's a great idea if they if they plan on shortening the regular season to down to like seventy five or, or sixty six games or something like that. Then yeah, a play in game would be an excellent idea. But as far as if you go keep the full slate of eighty two games, and I'm with you. I'm a tradition tradition traditionalist also as far as they should definitely uh, keep it the way it is. But I mean, it's a great it's a great wrinkle to add into the uh, into the mix stuff because the game itself was very entertaining. You know, it came down to the wire, and you know, it was no way in hell the Grizz gonna win twice uh, in that scenario. But you know, this past that, that, that past Saturday, you know, when the game went down, the playing game, you know, everybody in Memphis was tuned in. I'm sure everybody in Portland was watching also, man. So I, I'm in favor of it if they do plan on uh, cutting down the regular season because I mean, it, it would be a great look. But 82 games is long enough to determine uh, who the eighth seed is. And you know it. I, the bubble kind of made it happen because, you know, to bring 22 teams that had to make, to make it make sense. And they literally said yeah. that if they can get in the playoffs, he ain't coming down now. So to make it make sense, mm -hmm. you had to give some an incentive. And But the Grizz, to me, did get kind of shafted because the over the, the totality of the year, they were the AFC. We got to the bubble. Things didn't go their way. So – and it, the Grizzlies should kind of feel slighted, but it was good for the NBA. Yeah, and I mean, the way, it, you know, the way it went down, uh, if we didn't have corona, no pandemic, yeah, I think the Grizz would have held on uh, to the AFC, but it got knocked out the first round by the Lakers. But um, the way the way everything went down now, like, we, I, I really didn't want to see the Grizz in the playoffs this year anyway after – the long layoff and the injuries and everything it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been our best representation of Definitely. ourselves of the team. Yeah, so it, it worked out the way it was supposed to, man. But next year though, oh man, the grid's coming. But then the Western Conference is gonna be even tougher next year. We got to think Golden about it. State coming Golden back. State. You gotta put Golden State back in the mix, man. So it's no guarantee the Grizz make the playoffs next year, you know, but I think just having that Having that kind of like playoff experience in a way mm -hmm. of having to play these games in the bubble and the play in game, like that's invaluable for a young team, the youngest team in the NBA. Most definitely. Such as the Grizzlies, man. Yeah. So it's all going to work out in the long run. Now, also, bro, the playoffs are started. Let's start like today, man. Houston Rockets up 2 0 on the Thunder without Russell Westbrook. And actually, they're defending like crazy. Like they've been in the bubble. The Rockets. Playing defense, Mike D'Antoni, uh, his team defending <laughs> 2020 th upside down again, bro. <laughs> hey man, the upside down, right? This is the weirdest year ever. You know, it, everything's up in the air, everything's crazy. So why not? Why not the Rockets being a a decent de defensive team, man, in the bubble? Like, I mean, you can literally see the uh, scenario where the Rockets could be NBA champions, man. Like, it's that crazy, man. It really is, dude. I mean, they played two great games so far, you know, without Westbrook. Uh, shit, shoot. I mean, my bad. Can we say, can we say, uh, hey, I'll end are it the out. Rockets a better team? <laughs> yeah. Are they a better team without <laughs> Russell Westbrook at this point? If it comes down to it against the Lakers, no, but against OKC, yes. Like, yeah. this is my thing. Keep him out until you lose and have to play him. Yeah. You no. Know, to let him rest and recover. So, man, I'm yeah. – hey, if I'm Houston, I bought some time for his his leg to heal. Absolutely. You know, why not, man? I, like, they, could, they could very well sweep uh, OKC 
and not need Russell at all this first round, man. So I'm I'm definitely in agreement with that, man. Rest him as long as you can, and then, you know, in case of emergency, break that glass, man. But like I I, I love I love the idea of just having the ball in in Harden's hands. You know what I'm saying? Like he's gonna make the best decision possible. Westbrook is great, but he's just too he's still too erratic for me. You know, too many turnovers and just like I think the Rockets function best when Harden has the ball. They do. They do, for sure. Most definitely, because all the eyes defensively are on James Harden. And Russell Westbrook, now, what it does do, when you put too much attention on Harden, you have to pick your poison. Is it Westbrook for two? Yeah. Of course, I'm going to let Westbrook go for two, of course. I'm a defense. So, yes, I'm with you what? now. Pick your poison with Harden in his hands. Go for it. Also, the Celtics and Sixers, uh, bro, I know somebody's going to get me in trouble with my guy, Al Horford, but he's, he's finished, man. He got that one last deal from Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. All the times called up Al Horford bad. And oh, yeah. come yeah. off the bench he's, now. He's um, yeah, yeah, I man. love Al Horford, man. That's my guy. But, man, he doesn't fit in Philadelphia. I'm him, His agent will be happy. And he's – if they go that deal from Philadelphia, four years, nine, 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 four, four million, because, man, he's went downhill fast. And Elton Brand and Brett Brown are in trouble, probably, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I think uh, – you know, they get swept or lose the first round regardless. I think Brown's out of there, man. You know, uh, and, and it makes sense at this point because Philly is too too talented of a team to be knocked out in the first round. I know they missed Ben Simmons and everything, but they, they, they you would think they would still put up a better effort than what they've done so far uh, in these two playoff games, man. And, you know, they're a team that is underachieving, man. And, you know, why you still have this window, you know, with a young Ben Simmons and a young Joel Embiid, man, you got to go try to win a chip. And I don't think uh, Brown is uh, the right coach for, uh, for, for that team going forward, man. Just think of how many guys they traded away they could have killed, like Robert Covington, Dario Saric, TJ McConnell, yeah. all these guys, yeah. uh, Mikael Bridges with Phoenix now. Uh, all these guys they traded away trying to go for the, for the gusto. And now look at them, they're mismatched, thin. Yeah. And very top and front court heavy. You can't be front court heavy in today's NBA. You have to be guard heavy, not front. Yeah. Heavy. Never very much front court heavy with mismatch pieces. Right. The pieces don't match. You you absolutely spot on, boss. The pieces don't match. I think Elton Brand kind of let his playing days kind of you know uh, cloud his uh, his judgment there as far as you know all the bigs and front court players. But uh, but yeah, the pieces don't match, man, and. You know, you, you got you got to make a move. You got to fire uh, Brown because you don't want an unhappy Joel Embiid next season, man. You know, or Joel, Joel Embiid that is ready, you know, once his, once his contract is up to get up out of there. You know, those are franchise corner pieces. But if you are going to flip one of them, the time is now. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to try to flip one of them to get even, you know, more pieces down the road, mm -hmm. you know, the time is now, man, to make that happen. Most definitely, and this series ain't getting too much play because of playing the court, but Jock Vaughn is coaching his butt off for the Nets. He, he might not get that job in Brooklyn, but he's definitely earned him a second gig somewhere because he has those guys, a G League plus team, if you, if you look at it, playing hard and competing every night, defending the, the – some of Portland, some of the Raptors two games. They're playing hard for this man. If I won't get, won't get the job, but he's definitely earning a job elsewhere for sure. Somewhere, at least another yeah. shot somewhere. I've always liked Jack Vaughn, man. You know, going back to his playing days in Kansas, uh, the time that he was in San Antonio as an assistant. He also had a uh, – he, he had a head coaching gig in Orlando also, right? He sure did with the man. Uh, yeah, with the, uh, yep. yeah, yeah, for a year or two, yeah. So, I, you know, I've always liked him, man. Good guy, good guy to talk to. Um, man, but, yeah, he's doing a great coaching job, and – it almost makes you think Kyrie who, you know, KD who. But, you know, when those guys come back in the mix next season, man, Brooklyn going to be tough, man. You talk about a big three, you know, Kyrie, KD, and LeVert. Jesus. If they can just – if they can blend, man, and, and Kyrie can get in the right headspace, man, Brooklyn can do some things next year, man. Most definitely. And Alvin Gentry got fired up by the Pelicans. Um – I fear it's going to happen to happen to Lloyd Pierce in Atlanta, that, you know, you get them to a certain point, 
they're gonna fire you and bring in another guy to take him over the top, and you put you took all the ill, dealt with all the injuries and hard losses on your record. You can't get another job elsewhere, but they fire you and you bring bring somebody else to take his place. So, Alvin Jones to me didn't get a, didn't get a fair shake this time because Zion was hurt, all, all them injuries, the pandemic, and. The guy's out of shape. Let's be right. Josh Zion was out of shape. I don't know how much the guy weighed. Yeah. He labored after a minute or two up and down the court. How you hold that as his album of entry? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like he had a raw deal here. A lot of coaches in the community are saying he had a raw deal. Yeah. I believe he did too. Extremely. Extremely raw deal, man. Uh, it's unfair. You know, that's how it goes sometimes in the NBA for blackhead coaches, man, as we all know. Uh, you talk about a guy that's been there five years. Uh, and everything that happened this year, you know, how can you how can you judge his coaching ability off of a messed up season like this, man? Like, you know, if you are David Griffin, man, at least wait till next season, man. And you know, I, I would even been I would even been okay with maybe uh, next season, you know, midway point All Star break if the Pelicans are under are underachieving then, you know, and not meeting expectations. Okay, let them go then, man. But that's that's no way in hell you can make a decision based off of him and his ability to coach his team, you know, in the bubble and the pandemic, you know, I think, I think it was really an unfair expectation for them to even think that they were going to have a chance, you know, to to make the playoffs, man. When Zion, he's, he's obviously not healthy, you know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's not right. You know, as far as his body, man, uh, he has to lose weight, uh, you know, for Zion to be effective going forward in his future. But yeah, that, that was a totally raw deal, man, for Gentry to get to go out like that. And speaking of a potential replacement, uh, Teron Lou, who wants to poach uh, Thompson Billups out of the broadcast booth to be an assistant coach. Now I know Billups wanted a front office role, but he's getting the coaching bug. Now, the thing about a uh, Teron Lou, associate head coach, is Chauncey Billups in New Orleans or wherever Lou might get a job next year. I can see it happening. I can see it happening. Definitely, Teron Lou championship. Winning head coach, man, you know he can do the job. Uh, he's waiting on the right opportunity. I uh, thought he had the Lakers gig, uh, you know, about a year or so ago. That didn't pan out. But, yeah, definitely, man. Like, I can see if you exchange – you exchange Alvin Gentry for uh, a Tyron Lewis, something like that. Okay, all right, you're working with something then, man. You talk about a guy that the, the players – he's still – Tyron Lewis is still a guy that I think players can relate to. You know, uh, he's a player's coach. And they're going to be able to relate to him. And you bring in somebody with that championship pedigree, guys will automatically perk their ears up and listen to whatever he's got to say. Not saying that the Pelican, Pelican players tuned out Alvin Gentry. It's, it's a different – it hits different when you're a head coach that's won a championship as opposed to an assistant coach that's won a championship, man. So, um, like I said, I would definitely be in favor. You know, he's going to get a job somewhere. You know, why not New Orleans, man? I think that would be a great look for him. Just don't take the Chicago job. That's a three, a three year fire and waiting to happen. <laughs> that's, that's toxic, man. That is toxic yeah. uh, all the way around, man. That whole Bulls thing, man. Stay away from that. Do you think, real quick, do you think Mike D'Antoni is saving his job in Houston or, or no? I think he has. Like, the way this thing is going, like, Tony, <laughs> he might have saved his job, man. I think, he, I think the Rockets are going to advance far. And, you know, say what you want about him, man. And, and you know, his, his relationship with the, owner, the owners there, the ownership in Houston. But I think he saved his job, man, and is going to get that much-wanted extension that he's been seeking, man. Like, he's doing an out, outstanding job right now. Most well, definitely. And, bro, this is the to the NFL. Dennis Bryant worked out with the Ravens today, left out a contract. Um I think this has made me maybe a way to tamp down them on Antonio Brown because you know his cousin wants him on the team and Lamar Jackson wants him. Well, well let's just do Dez Bryant first. I think Dez Bryant needs this shot, bro. I don't think he has anymore. That clear injury in New Orleans did it. His knees are already gone in Dallas. I think I know he wants to play, but I think Dez Bryant's time has passed him by. It has. The only the only way I would consider Dez being on my team is if he switched positions, if he went to tight end. That's the only way I would consider it, man, because the way the game is played now, as far as being a number one, number two, or even a number three receiver, man, speed kills. And Dez, he was never a fast guy. He was always a guy that can high point, high point the ball, you know, and, and our muscle and our physical other DBs, you know, to get the ball. So he was never a speed demon, you know, but 
if I, if I told Diz, hey man, put on ten pounds of muscle, and let's try you out at tight end, I think he may have you know a couple more years left in him if he switched position. But as far as receiver, nah, it's not happening because you see he didn't he didn't receive a contract from Baltimore uh, after the workout, man. And I think the other receiver also that was trying out for a spot was Dwayne uh, Harris, another former Cowboy, Dwayne Harris, yeah. You know, and Dwayne Harris, could do, he, he could do more things. He, he could play special teams. He could be a punt returner for you. You know, so uh, I think Dwayne Harris probably have a better chance of getting that gig than, uh, than Dez Bryant. And poor Dez, man, you know, um, you talk about a guy that was all pro, putting up big-time numbers, you know, when Romo was quarterback, man. Uh, you know, you hate for him to go out like this. Man. But now it just Dez it seems thirsty to me, man, like – I hope I hope he, he you know his finances are good and he's made his money you know we know he made his money he's you know he take care of he can't live out the rest of his years on it but if it's a money thing that he's that he's going after you know because he needs it or it, it, does he need the money or does, does does he just want to play football you know it's two different things two different motivations there if you're doing it for the money you know I, maybe that's the reason why he's been trying to you know hang in there these last few years but if you're doing it out of pure love. I can understand it, but you want to be able to, um, you know, I, I hope that he would go out, you know, uh, have, have a better chance to go out than, uh, than what's happened so far for him, man. Most definitely. And the NCC, bro, is uh, green lighting fans and stands, man. And, you know, most of the schools NCC in the South and then Republican controlled states like Tennessee or Georgia, where, you know, we know where our governor stands, that they're students of you know who. And, I feel like, you know, they, they asking for people to die, asking for a lawsuit. Because mm -hmm. somebody go to the game, they playing Rocky Top or go to Vanderbilt or wherever, they gonna get sick. And they gonna come back and try to sue you for it. So make them sign a waiver. Yeah. So it's NCC trying to push yeah. forward with college kids who are unpaid labor, um, unpaid young black men. And you put them in peril to play games in stadiums and putting fans in peril as well, who are older in the South and, un and, and unhealthier in the South. Bro, the rest of the disaster SEC's putting themselves in right now, bro, in my opinion. It's crazy, man. Like I said, you know, pandemics, I mean, pandemics, but outbreaks are happening. You know, it seems like every day now on big time campuses, man, Ole Miss, like you said, just announced uh, their outbreaks of, you know, as far as COVID-19 uh, related cases, man. So, man, just shut it down, man. Like, I mean, at this point, man, shut it down. Like, why are you even playing, man? If I'm if I'm an SEC player, man, I can't I can't go out there and, and you know in good conscience give it my hundred percent all, knowing there's a chance I could get sick. I'm gonna recover, you know. But what's my you know, prognosis, you know, going forward, you know, throughout my life, man. Like, what type of ailments am I going to have, you know, health health issues that could be lingering down the road, man. This whole thing is just so scary, man. So, you know, these guys, you know, the powers that be are putting them out there. You know, it's all for the mighty dollar bill. But at the end of the day, man, like, come on, what are we doing? You know? Most definitely. Yeah, what are we doing, man? And speaking of what you just mentioned, bro, Right here in Atlanta, Georgia State quarterback is out for the year because of a heart ailment from having COVID-19. Mm. COVID-19 affects every organ in your body. I guess your lungs. There it is. It, you, it, it can really hurt your heart. Remember, an NBLB player, COVID-19, out if you the heart ailment. So COVID-19 attacks the whole body. It may come yeah. in the form of respiratory and a flu, cold look, but it's doing way more. It's damaging the body and major organs. And a young man in his 20s, out for the year, with a heart ailment from COVID-19. And people will still want to be fools and believe it's a hoax because certain people in power will tell them it's a hoax that they want to get reelected re re as president. Man, it's, it's wild, man. You know, um, and it's like, it's like one of those things where, you know how when you, when you turn on the news and you see, you know, if you had this, if you had that, you may be entitled to yes. uh, a settlement. That's that's gonna happen. Uh, you know, COVID nineteen down. Once they find out all the different ailments and things that can come about, like that's that's what's gonna be next, man. Uh, it's just a scary time that we're living in, and you know, at this point, I don't blame the Big Ten commissioner. 
for shutting it down because, you know, you, you got to think about the long term, the long term effect of this thing, man. Yeah, you might recover in the short, short end of it, you know, if you're a young, strong, you know, college athlete. But, man, 30, when you turn 30, 35, 40, you just don't, you just don't know what's down the road, man, when, once you uh, come in contact with this uh, disease, you know. So it's, it's wild. It's wild, man, that we, we, we're actually talking about, you know, putting kids out there risking their life, you know, uh, on the short end and, and the long end of it. Only in America. Only in America. And, bro, before we close up shop, tell us a recap for us, the Central AF Podcast from last week, what you got coming up for the people this week, brother. Oh, uh, man, Central AF Podcast. You know, we stream live each and every Sunday on Facebook at 6 o'clock. Um, man, last week, you know, of course, a lot of uh, Kamala Harris talk, you know, uh, her being nominated for the VP and, and everything, you know, that comes with that, man. We talked about that and broke it down. Oh, uh, man, this week? Hey, we know we got to talk about that Sweetie Pie story, man. I, I know you heard about that, boss. I did. I know you heard about that. That's the craziest story in the world, man. Everybody has an opinion on that. You know, that's, that's foul. Like, how can you, you know, uh, take out an insurance policy and have your, your nephew murdered like that, fam? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So we go definitely get into that, man, and everything going on in the world coming up on the next uh, Essential AF podcast show, man. Bro, no doubt. JC, man, keep it safe, my brother, man. Hold it down. And, bro, my brother has got on our Nike gear, so we represent Nike today as well. Uh, bro. So, so. <laughs> swoosh all day. <laughs> Nike, Nike gang. And swoosh life. Yeah, yeah, all day. Gang, 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 gang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bro. How are you, bro? That's JC Smith All on the right, Boss Man Show. 